My name is the Reverend Nigel Irons, and it's my pleasure to welcome you to St. Edward's Church in Leek for our service of morning worship on this fifth Sunday of Easter. Christ is risen. Alleluia. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. So we sing our first hymn. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Christ our Passover has been sacrificed for us. Therefore let us rejoice by putting away all malice and evil and confessing our sins with a sincere and true heart. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault, we are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. And so, may God, our Heavenly Father, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy on you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Collect for today, the fifth Sunday of Easter. Almighty God, who through your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, have overcome death and opened to us the gate of everlasting life. Grant that, as by your grace going before us, 
you put into our minds good desires, so by your continual help we may bring them to good effect. Through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Old Testament reading is taken from Genesis chapter 22 verses 1 to 18. After these things God tested Abraham. He said to him, Abraham, and he said, Here I am. He said, Take your son, your only son Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains that I shall show you. So Abraham rose early in the morning, saddled his donkey and took two of his young men with him and his son Isaac. He cut the wood for the burnt offering and set out and went to the place in the distance that God had shown him. On the third day, Abraham looked up and saw the place far away. Then Abraham said to his young men, Stay here with the donkey. The boy and I will go over there. We will worship and then we will come back to you. Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it on his son Isaac and he himself carried the fire and the knife. So the two of them walked on together. Isaac said to his father Abraham, Father, and he said, Here I am, my son. He said, The fire and the wood are here, but where is the lamb for a burnt offering? Abraham said, God himself will provide the lamb for a burnt offering, my son. So the two of them walked on together. When they came to the place that God had shown him, Abraham built an altar there and laid the wood in order. He bound his son Isaac and laid him on the altar, on top of the wood. Then Abraham reached out his hand and took the knife to kill his son. But the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham, and he said, Here I am. He said, Do not lay your hand on the boy or do anything to him. For now I know that you fear God, since you have not withheld your son, your only son, from me. And Abraham looked up and saw a ram caught in the thicket by its horns. Abraham went and took the ram and offered it up as a burnt offering instead of his son. So Abraham called that place, The Lord will provide. As it is said to this day, On the mount of the Lord it shall be provided. The angel of the Lord called to Abraham a second time from heaven and said, By myself I have sworn, says the Lord, because you have done this and you have not withheld your son, your only son, I will indeed bless you and I will make your offering, offspring as numerous as the stars of heaven and as the sand that is on the seashore. And your offspring shall possess the gate of their enemies and by your offspring shall all the nations of the earth gain blessing for themselves, because you have obeyed my voice. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The reading is from Acts chapter 11, beginning at verse 1. The apostles and brothers throughout Judea heard that the Gentiles also had received the word of, the, of God. So when Peter went up to Jerusalem, the circumcised believers criticised him and said, 
you went into the house of uncircumcised men and ate with them. Peter began and explained everything to them, precisely as it had happened. I was in the city of Joppa praying, and in a trance I saw a vision. I saw something like a large sheet being let down from heaven by its four corners, and it came down to where I was. I looked into it and saw four-footed animals of the earth, wild beasts, reptiles and birds of the air. Then I heard a voice telling me, Get up, Peter, kill and eat. I replied, Surely not, Lord. Nothing impure or unclean has, has ever entered my mouth. The voice spoke from heaven a second time. Do not call anything impure that God has made clean. This happened three times, and then it was pulled up to heaven again. Right then, three men who had been sent to me from Caesarea stopped at the house where I was staying. The Spirit told me to have no hesitation about going with them. These six brothers also went with me, and we entered the man's house. He told us how he had seen an angel appear in his house and say, Send to Joppa for Simon, who is called Peter. He will bring you a message through which you and all your household will be saved. As I began to speak, the Holy Spirit came on them as he had come on us at the beginning. Then I remembered what the Lord had said. John baptised with water, but you will be baptised with the Holy Spirit. So if God gave to them the same gift as he gave us, who believed in the Lord Jesus Christ, who was I to think that I could oppose God? When they heard this, they had no further objections and praised God, saying, So then, God has even granted the Gentiles repentance unto life. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. And now we'll sing our second hymn.
Alleluia, Alleluia. I am the first and the last, says the Lord, and the living one. I was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Alleluia. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. When Judas was gone, Jesus said, Now is the Son of Man glorified, and God is glorified in him. If God is glorified in him, God will glorify the Son in himself and will glorify him at once. My children, I will be with you only a little longer. You will look for me, and just as I told the Jews, so I tell you now, where I am going, you cannot come. A new command I give you, love one another as I have loved you. So you must love one another. By this all men will know you are my disciples, if you love one another. Simon Peter asked him, Lord, where are you going? Jesus replied, where I am going, you cannot follow now, but you will follow later. Peter asked, Lord, why can't I follow you now? I will lay down my life for you. Then Jesus answered, Will you really lay down your life for me? I tell you the truth. Before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. And we pray now that as we reflect on it, you will meet us afresh by the power of your Holy Spirit and give us ears to hear, minds to understand, and hearts to receive your truth. In Jesus' name. Amen. A woman asked her husband what he would like for his birthday if money was no object. He said he would like something that can go from naught to a hundred in under three seconds. So she was surprised to discover that he got upset when she bought him a pair of bathroom scales. Life can bring us many surprises. Some may be exciting and others may be disappointing. But often surprises can also teach us things about ourselves, the world and one another that help us to move on in better ways. That's the kind of surprise that Peter got in our reading from Acts this morning. And whenever God surprises us, we can always learn from it. So I want to look at what happened to Peter under three headings, all beginning with the letter E. First of all, experience. Peter seems to go into some kind of trance-like state as he receives a strange vision in which God shows him something new. Peter's first question must have been whether or not it was actually God who was showing him this. Peter was a Jew and he knew Jewish law. In one of the Old Testament books of the law, Leviticus chapter 11, there is a detailed list of animals which God had said must not be eaten, including camel, badger, hare, pig, eagle, vulture, osprey, kite, falcon, raven, ostrich, hawk, gull, owl, cormorant, ibis, water hen, pelican, stork, heron, and bat. A tasty stew by anyone's standards. Now God was telling Peter something 
that he could not find anywhere in the scriptures and which contradicted what Peter knew the scriptures already clearly said. Could this be right? Could this be genuine? Could this be true? Sometimes we may find ourselves asking God similar questions. Scripture tells us everything necessary for salvation, but it does not tell us everything there is to know about life or God. There is a local rule at Nyanza Golf Club. If a ball comes to rest in dangerous proximity to a hippopotamus or crocodile, another ball may be dropped at a safe distance, no nearer the hole, without penalty. Peter had an experience where God seemed to be changing the rules. Of course, rules can be very important and helpful, but sometimes we need to be careful not to rely on rules so much that we shut out something new that God might want to show us. So, secondly, there is an event. Peter listened to God. God knew that it would be hard for Peter to accept what he was telling him, and that's why the vision happened three times. Its repetition was God's way of making his point. And sometimes we may need God to do that with us too. He may show us something that we aren't really sure about or choose not to take on board. But then he may show us the same thing again and again until we get the message. And then immediately three messengers from Cornelius in Caesarea who had been directed by God to Peter's house, arrived, asking Peter to come with them to the house of Cornelius and share with them the message of salvation. Until now, Peter and many other Christians from a Jewish background had thought that Jesus had come to save Jews only, because the whole of the Old Testament told them that the people of Israel were God's chosen people. God was challenging Peter to recognise that something new was happening, that the Old Testament, containing the Old Covenant, was no longer in place, because a new covenant had now been made through Jesus. And this new covenant was not just for Israel, but for the whole of mankind. In other words, not just for Jews, but for Gentiles too. So Peter went to Cornelius' house. Caesarea is about 40 miles from Joppa, where Peter was staying, so the journey would have probably taken more than a day. When he arrived, he was greeted with great expectation, and that expectation was not disappointed. Peter preached the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ, to the Gentile household of Cornelius. And before he had even finished speaking, God poured out the Holy Spirit on these people who were hungry for the truth and completely open to embrace the way of salvation as soon as they heard it. Peter would have been thinking, this is not supposed to happen. But he knew the Holy Spirit had been given to them because they heard them speaking in tongues like the disciples at Pentecost had experienced and extolling God. Peter's problem was that these people had not yet asked to be baptised and the experience of the early Christians so far had taught them that God did not pour out the Holy Spirit on unbaptized believers. Again, Peter's understanding of God, this time based on experience rather than scripture, was being challenged. And God again took him by surprise. Even today, there are Christians 
who still believe that God will not give the Holy Spirit to a believer until they have been baptised. Even today there are Christians who believe that you are not a proper Christian unless you can speak in tongues. Even today there are Christians who put other conditions on what God can and cannot do and who God can and cannot accept. But they are wrong. The truth of the matter is that we ourselves cannot make any rules which place conditions on God because ultimately God makes the only rules that count for anything and he can change them too. Peter had a puzzling experience and a challenging event and this resulted in enlargement. What happened here was that the boundaries of God's kingdom were enlarged as others were welcomed in. And again, Peter would have found this hard. Cornelius was the last kind of person that Peter, as a Jew, would have chosen to welcome into the kingdom of God. The Jews were oppressed by Rome, and Roman law was enforced by Roman soldiers. And who was Cornelius? A centurion, an officer in the army which oppressed the Jews, an official of the military regime which had in fact crucified Jesus. And here God was saying, I don't care, and welcoming this man and his family and friends into his kingdom. Cornelius may have been a Roman soldier, but God saw that he was a man of faith, and his heart was open, and so he showed Peter that the boundaries of his kingdom were much larger than Peter had imagined. If we look at clouds from down here on earth, they seem flat and simple. But if you fly up into them in an aircraft, you realise how complex and multidimensional they are. Peter may have thought that Jesus came to save only the nation of Israel, but God made it clear that what Jesus did was even greater and more wonderful and surprising, and that in the new plans and purposes of God, no one was excluded from the opportunity and the possibility of faith and salvation and the indwelling presence of the Holy Spirit. What Jesus accomplished was for everyone, whoever they may be. So we have an experience, an event and an enlargement. And the common thread which runs through these is that they were all unexpected. For Peter, the experience contradicted scripture. The event contradicted his experience. The enlargement contradicted his personal inclinations. And if we can take only one message away from this passage, it is that God is saying, don't imagine that you can tie me down. I am God, and I can say what I like. I can do what I like, and I can welcome whoever I like into my kingdom. Some of us like to build structures that keep God in his place. But God is God and can't be confined. He may want to open up new ways of thinking and being and doing to us. We may think that God can't possibly do this or that or the other, but God might want to say to us, Oh yes, I can. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, God of surprises, help us not to confine you by our rules and regulations 
and our structures and systems. Keep us open to listening to you and being surprised. Jesus, God of impossibilities, overcomer of death, bringer of mercy and new life, open our hearts and minds to new horizons and new possibilities as we follow you in the path of faith. Holy Spirit, God of epiphanies, enlarge our understanding of you, our thinking about you, and our engagement with you, so that we can walk in the freedom of Christ and bring that freedom to others. Amen. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand, of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And now we'll sing our third hymn.
Let us pray. Blessed are you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, a Creator, Saviour, and Inspirer. We give thanks for your love and glory, revealed in the death and resurrection of Jesus. We rejoice in his love for us, and seek to be his friends always. Blessed are you, one God, for ever. Lord, in your love, renew and restore us. We give thanks for the faithfulness of your disciples and the love of your saints throughout the ages. May your glory be revealed through your church today. We ask your blessing upon all who proclaim your love and your saving power, upon all who are seeking to bring reconciliation and peace to the world. We ask you to bless all who translate and publish the scriptures and all who reach out in mission. Lord, in your love, renew and restore us. We praise you, O Lord, for your renewing powers, and we ask your blessing upon areas that have been marred and spoiled by greed or war, especially remembering at this time the people of Ukraine. We pray for all who live in deprived or slum areas, for those who have lost their homes through debt or violence. We remember all who are refugees or victims of terror. Lord, in your love, renew and restore us. We give you thanks for all who have been our friends and help us throughout our lives. We ask your blessing upon our homes and our loved ones. We pray for friends whom we have not seen for a while, and for all who share our daily lives. We remember any who are lonely, or who feel unloved or unwanted. Lord, in your love, renew and restore us. Lord, we remember your suffering, and we pray for all who have been betrayed or deserted by friends. We remember those whose relationships are breaking down, and those separated from their loved ones due to illness or infirmity. We pray for all who are suffering at this time, in body, mind or spirit, either at home or in hospital, that you would pour out your healing and renewing grace upon them. And for those who mourn the loss of those they have loved, to know the comfort of your loving presence. Lord, in your love, Renew and restore us. We give thanks that by your death you destroyed death, and by your rising to life again have restored us to eternal life. We thank you for all the saints, known and unknown, who have been loyal to you to the end. And we pray that you would sustain and strengthen us as we follow in their footsteps until that day when we share with them in the glory of your eternal kingdom. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. The risen Lord Jesus came and stood among the disciples and said, Peace be with you. And they were glad when they saw the Lord. 
The peace of the Lord be always with you. Peace be 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 with you. And now we'll sing our fourth hymn. Blessed be God, who feeds the hungry, who raises the poor, who fills our praise. Blessed be God forever. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. 
It is right to give you thanks in sickness and in health, in suffering and in joy, through Jesus Christ, our Saviour and Redeemer, who, as the Good Samaritan, tends the wounds of body and spirit. He stands by us and pours out for our healing the oil of consolation and the wine of renewed hope, turning the darkness of our pain into the dawning light of his kingdom. And now we stand with saints and angels, forever praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And on this Easter Sunday, we remember Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people and grant that we in the company of Edward, John and all the saints may praise and glorify you forever through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. And as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. May he open our hearts afresh to the power of his love, as we remember the sacrifice of Christ. And let us commit ourselves afresh to follow him in the way of the cross. Amen. O God, by whose command the order of time runs its course, forgive our impatience, perfect our faith, and, while we wait for the fulfilment of your promises, grant us to have a good hope because of your word, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Father of all, we give you thanks and praise that when we were still far off, you met us in your Son and brought us home. Dying and living, he declared your love, 
gave us grace and opened the gate of glory. Keep us firm in the hope you have set before us, so we and all your children shall be free, and the whole earth live to praise your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And so we sing our final hymn. And so may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and in the love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father who has created us, the Son who has redeemed us, and the Holy Spirit who breathes God's life, light, and love into our hearts rest upon you remain with you, guard you, guide you, keep you, and strengthen you in his service today and always. Amen. Thank you for joining us for our service here today. We extend a warm invitation to you to join us again next week for our all-age celebration service. Mm -hmm.